Welcome back, baseball fans, to the Fall Carryover League. 76, 7, 8, 9. Uh, we got a National League East encounter today between the Mets and Marlins. Mets are playing for their playoff lives. This is the Phillies era, and they are in first. Mets are trying to creep into the final end of the season of the Fall League, and they have to uh, beat the Marlins to uh, put them in second place beneath the um, ahead of the Braves and beneath the Phillies. So let's show you what's happened. <clears throat> Game one. Oh, the Mets are at home in Shea Stadium. They've got a lead of 5-3. Then in the ninth inning, they turn it over to Bob Apodica, and he blows the game with four runs to the ninth. Marlins win game one. Game two now. Um, the Mets uh, score 16 runs on 20 hits and win 16-3. So, yeah, so that's what they can do when they put their mind to it. But then we get back to game three in Florida. Mets again. Nice performance for Craig Swan. 4 1 lead in the eighth. This time, not a potica. It's Tug McGraw. He gets lit up in the eighth inning. And the Marlins win 5 4. <clears throat> that's, that's tough. Some tough sledding there. And when we look at the standings now, before we play game four, and see what's at, at stake. The Mets are four games back, and they desperately need to win game four to even the series, put them three and a half back, and then beat the Marlins in a game five back at Shea to put them three games back, with one best of five left, which, if the Mets sweep the Braves while the Marlins sweep the Phillies, the Mets can tie the Phillies. <laughs> you see where this is going. But anyway, the Mets, you say there's a chance? There's a chance for the Mets. Maybe it's the wild card route. But that's not the good news. The good news is the pitching matchup. Today, for the Mets, we get our guy Tom Terrific, Tom Seaver, in a largely elimination game here, will face former Met Nino Espinoza for the Marlins in uh, Florida. Let's get started. Jerry Grody leads off, and he strikes out. Lee Mazzilli flies to right, and Joe Torre bounces a short. This is... Craig Reynolds, 4-33, makes the play. Tim McCarver leading off. Catchers leading off the games for both teams. Something different. Ground ball to short. That's because McCarver and Grody led each team in on base percentage. Manny Moda, 4-4. Four, four. Homer, 108, double off Seavers, a double. Bostic, 2-2, two, two, pitcher. And Hebner, 6-11. First X. Tori's a 3 e 15. 3 e 15 makes the play. All right, we go to the second. Steve Henderson, 56 is a K. Claude L. Washington, third. And Tommy Helms, center. Bottom of two, Jose Morales, 63. Pitcher, Seavers an E6. Up, oh, and a cheap single off a of Seaver. That's just mean, if you ask me. Montanez, 2-6. Another single. Tito Fuentes, 1-8. That's a 6. 2-4. Three double play. Runner goes to third with two outs. On the twin killing, Jeff Leonard. Penitentiary face walks. Cornered runners. Two outs. Number nine hitter, Craig Reynolds. 46 off the Seaver card. Single to center field. That will score this guy. And we have two guys on base with two outs. And it's McCarver. 43. Left X. Don't leave it up to your defense, Tom. Uh, Claudio Washington's a 48 in left field. And that's a single dot dot. This is such a shame that he has such terrible defense behind him. Manny Mota with runners on the corners and two outs. 
111. That's he just missed his card. Let's take a look at it. This is, of course, the Manny Mota 395 card of 77. And we have Manny Mota rules, which say that he has to play left field, where he's a 4 plus 5 E16, and he's limited to six innings or four at bats, whichever comes first uh, in a game. So the Mets have that going for him. So with two outs, that inning's over. We'll go to the third. Two nothing. Mike Cubbage, 69. Double one of three, base hit. Youngblood, 38. Double one of six, double. And the Mets have something going here. Ken Boswell, 1 7, pops a second. Second and third, four. Jerry Grody to the max, 1 8, walks. Let's take a look at this card. Um, interesting card. This is him with the 78 Dodgers. And uh, not what you'd expect at all. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't throw runners out. So between him and Stearns, they they uh, do a decent job in some kind of platoon at this point. So you've got the bases are loaded with one out, and it's Lee Mazzilli. 49 is a base hit in the right field. Youngblood will not challenge. He's a 14 runner, but he won't take on the minus three arm of penitentiary phase. So the Mets go station is station with one out. It's Joe Torrey. And 1-5. Let's take a look at Torrey's card. Joe Torrey, his 76 Met 306 card. Homer won a six fly ball, and he goes yard for the salami. Joe frickin' Torrey, a four-run homer, and it's suddenly 5-2 Mets. And Tom Seaver is happy his teammate Joe Torrey. Yeah, and all that. A Henderson, 45 walks. Claude Washington, 411 Ks. And with two outs, Tommy Helms, Ks. All right, bottom of the third. Surely Seaver can hold this lead, even with this terrible defense. Bostic, 58 Ks. Not his terrible defense, his teammate's terrible defense. Virgie Hebner, 42 pitcher. Morales, that's a single. Willie Montanez, 2 6, that's a single. Tito Fuentes walks. Another interesting card. Let's take a look at it. The Tito Fuentes card. So this is 77. Signs a one-year deal with the Detroit Tigers because they don't have a second baseman. He hits 309 in 655 plate appearances. 309 with this card. Obviously his range is not very good, but his stick is there. And then he's gone because they have Lou Whitaker in 78 as a rookie for the Tigers. It's really weird for a guy to finish his career with a 309 batting average and never be heard from again. That's what happened. Jeffrey Leonard, 110, short. All right, big out there by the Mets and Seaver. Uh, getting Leonard out with the bases loaded, and it stays 5-2. to two. Mike Cubbage, 33, center. Youngblood, 2-3. Let's look at Joe Youngblood's card. See, this Met offense is really quirky. You know, you get one game, they score 16 runs, and they don't score for the other two games. This is a solo home run, and it's 6-2. to two. Boswell, third. Two outs for Grody. 65, second. We go to the fourth, bottom of Craig Reynolds. Double one of 16 off the Seaver card. Seaver has certainly not been sharp. McCarver, 3-6, center. Mota, 2-7, is a walk. This is insane. Seabrook's put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 men on in 3 and a third. Mercifully, only giving up 2 runs to this point. Bostock, 2 on. And let's check, take a look at Lyman Bostock's card. Would you believe he was the third best hitter on the Twins in 1977 behind Glenn Adams, behind Rod Carew's 388. That's why he's got the 15710 card, and he hit 336. Bostock, single one of seven. He gets the single, and for the second inning in a row, Seaver loads the bases. Actually, for the third inning in a row, he did it. Well, maybe not. There's a double play involved in that second inning. So, now the breaking rules would be 12 base runners through three. 
For four, you would need 15 in my rule. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve base runners. He's, he's all right. He'll be fine. Hebner, bases loaded, one out. They're playing back with a four-run lead. Former Met, Richie Hebner. <laughs> four, four. Homer won a 15 off Seaver, and you guessed it, folks, another grand slam in the game. Torrey and Hebner, a battle of corner infielders hitting grand slams. And we got a 6 sixer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Jose Morales, 2-5 short. And with two outs, Montanez, short. 6-6 six six in the fifth. Mazzilli, 46, second X. This is the Rangy Fuentes, 40-29, base hit. Mazzilli, a steeler, plus two our McCarver is gonna steal, and he's in there. He does not get a T rating. Runner at second for Torrey. 49, single left. Mazzilli, one to 16. The plus five arm of Muda makes it one to 21. And uh, yeah, he scores, believe it or not. 7-6, Mets in the fifth. Henderson, 2-10. Single, 1-9. Single. Is this clown broken? No, he's not broken. He's actually put less men on than bases than Seaver. Two on, nobody out. Claudel Washington, 59. Homer, 1-6, double. That's a double to center field. Torrey scores. Henderson will not take on the Bostic. Oh, he has to take on the Bostic arm. 1-14, have to run. He's throwing it out the plate. Wow. Little home field advantage, you can call it. If it's a 14, you gotta go. You're being waved home whether you wanna be run or not. And he, on a 14, he rolled a 17 and gets thrown out at the plate. Makes the first out of the inning at home plate. That's not a good thing. We got a runner at second, one out for Tommy Helms. Helms, this guy's all right. And with two outs, Cubbage, base hit the left field. Let's try and bring Claudel home. 17, 8, and a plus 5 arm. 17, 18, 19. It's 1 to 24, and he makes the 1 to 24 run. That's that's good. That's good news. Um, Youngblood. 56 is a K. Let's think about taking some of these pitchers out. What do you th what do you say? Let's say uh, he leaves after 5. Um, Seaver, on the other hand, has been presented with 3 more run lead. He was given a... 5-2 lead, then a 6-2 lead, now it's a 9-6 lead. And it's Tito Fuentes, K's. Jeff Leonard, 48, K's. Krenolds, 56, K's, and Seaver's back. 9-6 in the sixth. Pedro Borbone, in the sixth. This could be the longest game in history here. Boswell on the sixth inning. 57. Single one to 17. It's a line out on an 18. Tough break for Boswell. You know what we're going to do here with Ken Boswell with a three run lead? We're going to help our boy Tom Sear out, and I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to bring in Chuck Scribner. Let's take a look at Chuck to play some shortstop for Ken Boswell, who was a 40 48. So we're going to improve Seaver's defense, hoping that the Chuck Scribner defense at short will be the difference in the final four frames. Grody, 2-5, base hit for Grody, and we're going to make another move. We're going to take Grody out, and we're going to take the speed, put the speedy John Stearns, the speedy backup catcher, and he's an ace stealer. He'll pinch run, so we're swapping out uh, Seaver's battery, too. He's going to steal, ace stealer, and he steals second base. We'll put this that there. Got a runner at second, one out for Mazzilli. 3-6, let's take a look at Mazzilli's card. All the right moves for the Mets. Homer 1-9, it is gone. A two-run blast, it's 11-6. Surely Seaver can hold on to this one. Joe Torre, 45 center. And with two outs, it's Henderson, 37's a walk. Claude L. Washington, 46 center. 11-6, Seaver in the six. He's a start of nine, he won't go nine. McCarver, 6-12, first. Moda's final at bat, 58 left. See, oh, he pulls up limping at first base. He'll have to leave the game. 
Uh, Bostek will move, move from center into left field, where Moda was, and Beniquez will be the new center fielder for the Marlins. And here is Bostek, 6'11", first. And Tori's a 3E15. E oh, Tori boots that one. And with two outs, it's Hebner. 2-7 is a K. 11-6, 7th inning. Bourbon, uh, and a lost cause it seems, will give you another inning. Tommy Helms, 48, pops the first. Mike Cubbage, 55, short X. This is Reynolds, 40-33, mixed play. And Joel Youngblood, 57's a K. Well, Bourbon makes a nice comeback there. 11-6, stretch time in Florida. They've rallied a couple times in this game. We are listening to Iliad Zachoa. Had a great fortune to see him play live in the Afro-Cubism band. And that was a wonderful, wonderful time. Iliad Zachoa, part of the Buena Vista Social Club. All right, bottom of seven. Jose Morales leads it off 2-4 left. Willie Montanez, 47, single one of 13, base hit. He is three for four. Tito Fuentes, 5'11, bouncer to second. Tommy Helms is a 4E24, and he makes a play, barely. Um, runner moves up to second with two outs for penitentiary face. 33, third. Seaver gives you seven with not much. Uh, we might just pull him just because he's pitched a crappy game and they have somewhat of a comfortable lead. Bourbon leaves after two. Let's bring in former Met Neil Allen in the eighth inning. Let's see what he can do here. Here's Neil, former Met, and it's he'll face Chuck Scribner. Talk about throwing uh, the uh, soft, lobbing up some softball <laughs> questions. <laughs> Chuck Scrivener, 111, right. So Allen passes the first test. He got Scrivener out. Uh, John Stearns, 68, single. See what I mean? Second batter gets a hit. He's going to steal with a big five run lead, and he steals second base. Lee Mazzilli. This is the formula for the Mets we figured out. 612, pitcher. And with two outs, Torre, 36, single 108, single. Runners on the corners for Henderson. Center. So a 16-run game, an 11-run game. The Mets seem to have figured their offense. They figured their lineup out. What they haven't figured out is why they're blowing late leads with Tug McGraw and Bob Apodica. Well, we're going to try and do something different here. We're going to hook Seaver because he just put too many men on base, and he's probably throwing like 152 pitches. So Clay Carroll. Pretty much any time you pick Clay Carroll is going to have a 257 ERA or 252 or 255, something like that. It's 257 here. He's going to come on in the eighth with a five-run lead. Take the pressure off of McGraw and Apodica so they don't blow any more saves in the series. And he'll face Craig Reynolds in the eighth. 1-5 Craig Reynolds. Home, let's take a look at his card. Homer won a 12 fly ball and he missed it. McCarver. 56, second X. Helms, a 4E24, that's a base hit. Beniquez, in there for Moda. Beniquez, 67, single one of 14 off the Carroll card, that's a base hit. Two on, one out for Lyman Bostock. 67, single one of 19, that's a base hit. They're loaded for Richie Hebner who has one Grand Slam today, looking for another one. Base is loaded. One out in an 11-6 game. <laughs> the Mets make this so easy, don't they? don't they? With one out. Oh, I gotta, I gotta hook him. I gotta do it. I gotta <laughs> We're gonna put this thing in the hands of Tug McGraw and Bob Apodica, because it's, it's because of the Mets. It's what you do. Eighth inning, bases loaded, one out. Hebner will bat. The temptation would be to get a right-hander hander in there. But it's not like you got Mario Guerrero and some guy named Juan Bernard. So Hebner will bat. Mostly because he has 
a chance to get two grand slams in one game. The pitch to Hebner. 39 is going to be a walk. And now a grand slam would tie the game. As the bases are loaded with one out, and it's Jose Morales, an 11-7 game. The pitch to Jose Morales, an 11-7 game, 1-8. Let's take a look at Jose Morales' card. That's a base hit in the left field. That'll score Beniquez. Bostock, 15, will not try and go to third, down by as many runs as they are. It's 11-8, the bases are loaded for Montanez with just one out. Uh, Montanez is not a power against lefties. Playing back with one out and the base is loaded. Willie Montanez, 47, strikeout off the McGraw card. And with two outs, it's Tito Fuentes. He's got power against lefties. He had five home runs and 650 plate appearances. Tito Fuentes, the pitch. 1-4, grounds are short, and it stays 11-8. All right, Neil Allen had a lot of fun in the eighth inning. We're going to leave him in there for the ninth. Claude L. Washington, 66, short X. This is still Reynolds, 40-33, and he kicked that one. He booted that ball. Claude L. can steal bases, but Helms is going to hit and run here. That moves him to second anyway. Runner at second for Cubbage, center field. And with two outs, it's Youngblood, 46. It's a K, Neil Allen, to shut out innings. And it's up to McGraw and Apodica to get the final three outs with a three-run lead. It'll be Leonard leading off the ninth. 37 is a K. Craig Reynolds. Actually, it's lefties better than righties. We'll leave him in there. One three. Grounds is short. And with two outs, it's McCarver. And oddly enough, McCarver's not that bad against lefties either. We'll let him bat. McCarver, 111, grounds to first base. Is that a save? Sure, let me see. Well, yeah, because Carroll put all those guys on. Yeah, that'll be a save for Mr. McGraw. Because he didn't put those guys on. So it's 11 8 win for the Mets. Evening the series. <laughs> Making it as difficult as possible. Neil Allen gave up two hits and a K. Burbone gave up two hits, two runs, a walk and a K. Everything else off Espinoza, ten hits, nine runs. Oh yeah, it's all Aaron too. Killing my leg here, right? Two walks, five strikeouts. McGraw, a nice save. Kinda, sorta. He got to give up a hit, a walk, and a K. He hit a walk and two Ks. The usually dependable Clay Carroll um, gave up three hits and a run. Seaver, seven very undistinguishable innings. Eleven hits, seven runs. Walks, you know, gives up seven runs and wins a game for the Mets. That's pretty remarkable. Um, Excuse me, it was six. And that was two runs charged to Clay Carroll. So Seaver gave up six. Walk three, struck out five. 1019, 0109, 11, 14, 8, 15, 7, 4, 7. The Mets put 17 men on base, the Marlins put 19 men on base. It was the Mets did made better use of the base runners in that game. The teams have split four games. Let's see what this looks like year to date now. The Mets are clinging on to their playoff dreams by a fingernail here. But they get to go back to friendly Shea Stadium with Jerry Kuzman in game five. That should help. And the Marlins been kind of a dismal year for the Marlins. I'll explain why here. The, Mel the Marlins are 6-16. Six and 16. What's really interesting about being 6-16 six and 16 is that the Marlins have six guys tied for the team lead in wins with one. One and two, one and three, one and two, one and one, one and one, and one and oh. Six-way tie, leading the club in wins. So that's interesting. 
hitting 284 with a 613 team ERA. That's not going to get you many World Series rings. The Mets, look at that, 289, folks. That's a bunch of singles. 289, bunch of singles and double plays and stuff like that. 410 ERA, way too high for the pedigree of pitchers they have. And when you look at the National League East, with one game to play, the Phillies are looking at this with some interest. If the Mets lose this game, they would clinch the National League East before the final best of five against the Marlins. So uh, that's something to watch for. And the Mets, a game over 500. The Cardinals are down here at two over 500. And then the Dodgers are down here at two over 500. So, I mean, the Mets have a halfway decent chance of getting a wild card still. That's it from the National League East. Hope you enjoyed the uh, video. We'll see you next time.